Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sticking with us. And you know what? We're a little late this week. It's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing and so with that being said, we're going to go straight to the meat and potatoes. Ladies and gentlemen, this well, make some noise for Mr. Larry McDonald. Everyone's cheering out there, Larry. They're all... Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, I'm just... Uh, I'm... I'm just telling everybody that we're working on reggae standard time. So <laughs> that's why we're late. Exactly. That's, that's exactly. how we do it on this show. Yeah, that's man. how we do it. Well, it's funny because we'll be transparent with the audience. We were just, you know, kind of figuring out technical stuff. And all the while, I'm just still, I'm sitting back here going, I'm talking to Larry McDonald about Wi-Fi things. I'm like over here starstruck. Uh, I don't know why you even want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, this is Larry McDonald just talking to him like whatever, you know what I mean? We so didn't I even get a chance to like do our normal, like usually backstage, we'll do like our normal uh, introductions and stuff, you know, like get acquainted. And Larry, I don't know if you remember, but um, we, you and I did a session together with Dave. I played uh, guitar here in Venice on one of Dave's, uh, Dave Hilliard's sessions. I'm a good friend of Cheeky's. He brought me in. Um, and uh, we, we we kicked it one day in Venice at the Hen House Studio, and that was that was a great thing. Where? At Hen House in, Studio in, um, in Venice, Venice, in California. Venice, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We did that session, and then I think we did a show together too. I I played with Dave Hilliard a couple times on guitar, so I know like this is out of context, you know what I'm saying? But so we no 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 <laughs> is no it's 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 placing the whole thing in context, man. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, so, you know, first of all, uh, I, I was talking to Cheekies earlier this week, and he wanted me to just, you know, send his love to you and say say what's up. Um, but, you know, beyond that, man, where are you, where, tell the people where you're uh, calling in from. I'm calling in from East Village in New York. Nice. Beautiful. I love it. Beautiful. Um, I'm at home, and... They might, I think they're trying to make us stay in the house because the COVID is getting a little rambunctious mm -hmm. out, out in the city, you know. Our mm -hmm. numbers are good now. I mean, our numbers are among the best they got out there. I right. Mean, and they're good like Trump's. Right. <laughs> That's so crazy how it flips, right? The numbers are going here, we're going there. See, it, it's funny, too, because... Uh, <laughs> Devin mentions Cheekies and Dave and all these guys and every single guy I talk to, I mean, I'm envious of them because they've worked with you, Larry, and you're such a legend. But yeah. they always say the same thing, which is, man, you have to go on tour with Larry. He's just the funniest dude, the coolest dude. And uh, yeah, I already, I, I already I don't feel know. Who, you, who you been talking to my family. <laughs> <laughs> Your, your, musical, your musical family. Right, 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 man. Um, dude, I mean, she's where do we start, Devin? There's so many, well, so here's, many things. Here's to where start. I'd like to start. Here's yeah. where I'd like to start. So yeah. I, I was talking to Dave Hilliard earlier in the week, and he was I was like, Dave, you know, we're having Larry on. And he was like, Oh, you gotta ask him this, and you gotta ask him this, and you gotta ask him this, and you gotta ask him this. So I've got some questions uh in that regard. So you you grew up in Port Maria, Jamaica. Yes. And yes. and I wanted to know what music were you hearing at that time in that place and what influence do you think that had on your own percussion playing and style? Well, I left, I left Port Maria like in the late fifties. So you're talking about pre fifties. Just, yeah. Like listening to I was listening to, because I, I was listening to, first of all, I was into bebop. Wow. I was straight into bebop. And anything that was on the charts up here eventually made it to the charts down in, um, down in Jamaica. It's, we were listening to the same thing. It just took a while longer to get down there from than it does now. And it was rhythm and blues because it's the sound system dances, man. We had like great sound system. And the hometown favorite, well, we had a couple of hometown favorites, was Rue, 
and Rocket 88. Wow. And they didn't have the, they didn't have access to the records that like Coxon and Vinnie Trong from Randy's would, would, would get from the States. They had to wait until they get it. But once the, once the Jamaican music started, the first song that stood out for me was like Higgs and Wilson, Omanio. Mm. Nice. You know, and I knew then that I wanted to play. But I, I wasn't playing or anything then. Okay. And I eventually, what I eventually did was I told one half of my family, which lives in Port Maria, that I was going to spend the Easter holidays with my mother's side of the family in Kingston. And the next time they saw me was a couple of years later, and I was doing a show at the Lyric Theater in Port Maria. And that's the first time anybody knew I was playing. So you didn't tell them? Huh? You didn't tell them you were you were going to go play music. No, no, I it, it wasn't like it wasn't cool like to tell anybody you're going to play music back in the day. That wasn't like you see. There, there, there's a, there's a there's a story that like the musicians used to be like this. He'll show up. You'll give him an advance, and he might show up. If he shows up, he shows up late. He, the first place he goes, he goes to the bar. And if a fight breaks out, he's probably the one who breaks it, right? So that mm -hmm. was kind of the, the stereotype of, of a musician back then. It wasn't, it wasn't a gig that he was going to do, but I kind of wanted to play bad, even though I didn't know anything about it. So long story short, I went to Kingston and my sister's boyfriend had this drum and I borrowed it. Well, he never did get it back. Ah. That's a drum I learned to play on. Huh? No, I learned to play on that drum. I was kind of self-taught. So I stuck with the drum for like, I was on it daily for like 10 months, wow. you know, maybe eight hours a day, flying blind just figuring out what to do to get what sounds and it was a trip it was being self-taught because you always paranoid that you're doing some stupid stuff you know <laughs> which you had to get you had to do before you did the right stuff because you right. don't know what the right stuff was right 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 and uh for me I was lucky that after some months, I decided I wanted to play with people, see what that was like. And I went up to the Penguin Club where Trent and Spence used to play every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday night. And asked him if, if he could uh, if, let me sit in with him. There were only two other people that I knew that were playing any kind of serious congas at the time. Mm -hmm. it, congas was like a tradition, mm -hmm. you know, repeater, funde, buru drums, kumina drums, all that, that's a tradition. Congas mm -hmm. was not really a Jamaican tradition. Right. The mm -hmm. unfortunate thing is that's what I wanted to play. You know, so I was gonna to have to find so that's I was gonna to have to find a way to put it in there somehow in in into all that. Right. And I developed a very thick skin because of that too. I just acted like I didn't know what they were talking about, which I did. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. Right. But I finally I, I finally managed to get my uh get the feeling of what it was like, sort of what was required to 
be in the band and the whole thing. And then Trenton and I parted ways. And I was home over the Christmas holidays. And he was playing at the Bournemouth Club, which was quite near to my yard. And I'm saying, I'm not going to. I'm not going to Trenton's dance. I'm not. Screw that. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But but I could hear the music from from a veranda, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I said, oh, shit. Took up the drum and walked down there. Started. Sat in. Cecil Lloyd, who was a great Jamaican pianist back in the day, I had just come down from the States. And he was, you know, when you come home, you're looking for the music. Music at Bournemouth, he went down there. And he saw me playing. He said, man, I didn't know you were playing. I said, I didn't know either, but I hope <laughs> I was. <laughs> and, and he's, you know, he said, wow, you know, I came down to put this band together for the Runaway Bay Hotel. It was a new hotel that was going to be opened. And he said, look, everybody else, I already put the band together and everybody know what they're getting. And, you know, wow, maybe, maybe we can work something out next year. I said, well, cool. I wasn't like pushing it because I knew, I, I mean, that's like out of my league. I didn't have no business being up in there. Right. But, at that time. But. Cecil did like percussion. And he, so one day I came home and they said, look, this man came to the house looking for you. And he said, you have to come down to Runaway Bay tonight. Bring your drums and bring some clothes because you'll probably be there for a while. Wow. And, and I got a gig. This was the tourist season. The tourist season ran from December, like December 15th to April 15th. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that was where I was in the, the tourist circuit, the hotel circuit on the North Coast. What year is this? When the music, the ska music started, I was all up into that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I was, I mean, like, it wasn't there yet. So most people, it was popular in Kingston and it was growing. But I know musicians who couldn't stand it. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Look, look, Cecil, the aforementioned Cecil, my friend Cecil. Yeah. And Coxon were besties. Besties, yes. Okay. And Cecil would not play at the ska. He couldn't get, wow. you know how he got him on a record? He put together the Jazz Jamaica album. Wow. The one, yeah. But let me, he, let, let me, let me, just, let me stop you right there because at that time, wasn't there um, any, wasn't like the boogie woogie thing going on anyways? So wasn't it right there? Wasn't it close? Wasn't he like, mm -good, mm -good, mm -good, mm -good, you know? Yeah, yes, that but that was most you see that was mostly happening in Kingston. I got you. I would like I I was look, like doing this this parallel path, you know, and right. the music kept growing. It kept growing, but it wasn't like enough to like drag me away from the security of the hotel gig. Right. You know. Yeah. I had to have that. So. I, that gig finished, and by this time, it was getting into rock steady. Mm -hmm. You know, when rock steady started, I was home when rock steady started, but I left in the middle of 67 for Mexico. Wow. And 
I came back to Jamaica in 69 and it was reggae. Yeah. So I missed so I missed the whole rock set. I, I'm not on any rock set of records, man. Right, right. But but I mean you when, know? but when you mention, you know, the, the crystallites and the dynamites, I mean, you know, that that, that's that's my era. I love Jamaican music personally, all from the beginning all the way up until now. But that era, '69, and and all that stuff, yeah. you know, with the Clancy Echoes label, the Dynamites, and Win I'm a huge Winston Wright fan. So, you know, in fact, we have a we have a picture here of you, Larry, from this era. Let's see if it can oh, bring this up. look at is that, that? <laughs> is that Larry? Look at that gentleman. That shirt, that shirt, I uh. <laughs> I brought I, I brought that back from Mexico. Wow! Over 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 um to the to your left would be Wallace Wilson, guitar player. Um, beside him was Paul Douglas. I'm trying to figure out who that was beside him. That's Jackie Jackson in the back. Winston right beside him. Yeah, man. Me beside Win me beside Winston, Gladdy Anderson. Wow. Uh in front, clowning around is the late great Hux Brown. Oh man, that's right. <laughs> that, that is Hux Brown. That's right. Crazy. Yeah, and um this was Herman and Bunga Bunga Herman and Bingy Bunny, I think. Wow. Mm. No congas. And so yeah, you that was <laughs> so you would be playing uh, alongside them, right? It would be like you'd be, yeah. you'd be uh, no. We'll see, by this, when I, by the time I came back, right? By the time I came back, the I had to contend with the reggae because by now the stuff was happening, mm -hmm. right? You know, it was bubbling, and I was playing with Boris Gardner right. at Ooh. the Courtland Manor Hotel, right? You know, and. Hawks was in the band, Paul Douglas was in the band, and they it would be in the studios daily. You know, and mm -hmm. Boris even uh, nobody really realizes what a great bass player Boris. Boris used to play some hard reggae bass lines back in oh, the yeah. day. Yeah. A lot of those, a lot of stuff from scratch. Yeah, Boris. So I had to like gear myself up to figure out how I was going to, to drag the conga drum into this music because I'm right. I, I mean I'm going to have to do that. I, I just right. have to, you know, mm -hmm. because I wasn't going to stop playing congas just because of that. But and I, I like Tommy McCook and Roland. See, those are guys that like encourage me and would make me play. I'd meet them on the jazz sessions because I'd be in the jazz circuit with wow. on Sundays. Right. That was like every Sunday, just about. And they'd allow me to play. I wasn't look, I was not a pushy kind of guy because I know I knew that. In the same way I was looking at them with a weary eye, they were looking at me with a weary eye, you know. <laughs> They're looking at me and wondering where he's going with that. And I'm looking at them and wondering, how am I going to put this into that? Right, right. You know, and actually, I did make a little bit of name and stuff. Had a little one hit like and minor hits like Ruben with Winston with Wright. Winston Wright. Right. Can yeah. I tell you I have the record, <laughs> yeah, and it's a long story. I had gotten that record. I ordered it and uh the mailman fucked it up so the game came all cracked. But yeah, it says Winston Wright and Larry McDonald on Joe Gibbs, the label. Yeah. It's... Yeah. And that's the that that's a Peter Tosh rhythm, right? The Huh? Uh, that that song Ruben right is over the the rhythm of Peter Tosh. I forget the beaten. I forget the beaten. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Wicked tune yeah. for sure. And so yeah. that's you doing the like doo, doo, on the on the conga, right? Yeah. It, yeah. 
that is that 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 sound is actually called ca mm -hmm. nobody can tell me how it's spelled mm. whether it's s e e a <laughs> you know or c n n a right you know nobody knows how it's spelled and i've i've asked around that was it that was the sound that i took and made the little decent hit with um the rhythm track for holly holy the flames right. holly holy mm -hmm. yeah, yeah the dynamites right with uh with clancy what? yeah clancy yeah i have that one the, on the clan disc label yeah great clancy and, you know, and the dynamite. A, 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 anytime i heard that that rhythm the mm, mm, yeah like yeah. that was dude when i first started listening to that 69 reggae years ago man late yeah. 90s or whatnot the dynamites album we were just so the band I was the band one of my bands Agrolites, we were just so amazed that that was the part that made that the mm, mm, you know yeah I forget, I forget which dynamite song it was but it was a, it was a all instrumental stuff you know yeah and, it was it was the, the 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 rhythm track for Holly Holy that's it right. yeah yeah the, the dub track for Holly Holy right right mm -hmm. yeah and I got it into at least for, thanks to Bonnie Lee it's on uh Cherry O' Baby, Eric Downs, the Cherry O' Baby. Right. Uh, you know, so, Bunny Lee called me and I think he ran into each other in the studio and dynamic. Wow. And he said, man, I want you to put your thing on this. <laughs> you know, when they say that, I know what exactly what they're talking about. Right. You know, yeah. that's what, Everybody wanted that on their, on their record. Think, is, is that you on, there's a song by an artist named Casey White called Man No Dead. And the flip side has that thing the whole time. Is that you, or do you know, do you know what song that is? It would probably be me. Because mm -hmm. it's that the whole time, the same thing. Yeah, it would. It it would probably. Um, Heart of Africa with for Harry Moody. Oh wow! You know that's. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that's crazy. On some stuff for Keith Hudson. Mm-hmm. Uh. A couple of things around a scratch. It was. Is it, is it fair to say, because like you mentioned, you know, I mean, a lot of other people were playing the other drums, the kete and whatnot. If 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 you heard conga on in, in that era, is it safe to say that it was Larry, it was Larry McDonald? Like, was there any other competition as far as a conga player? Well, two of my heroes, my conga playing heroes from Jamaica. One was Noel. But the first one, let me mention Jerome Walters, because when Jerome left the Carlos Malcolm band, I got that gig. Mm -hmm. And also Noel Seal. Noel was one of the nicest Congo players I ever seen. When I grew up, I always, I still want to be Noel. No, nice. um, yeah, no, no. He was a solo and son of a gun too, and he knew it, you know, because he used to work on the ship, and he'd come off and go up in, in in Cuba. He'd come off and go hang out with the cats, you know. He was wow, and there were a couple of other people, but I don't think anybody was really serious about it, like Noel. And Jerome, you know. But were th were they recording on any reggae stuff though? No, not to my knowledge. Right. Not to my knowledge. So, like Roger was saying, like, is, is it fair to say that you know now if we listen to any records from that time period, from the reggae time period, early reggae, and we're hearing we're he we're hearing congas on those recordings, yeah, it's got to be you, right? It, I wouldn't say it's got to be, but there's a strong likelihood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, see, everybody, like, everybody was into everybody was into the indigenous drums, you know. Right, and, the, I, and I and and I want to ask you that question, right? Because you have all the drums that make up, you know, like Nai Bingi, the beat, you know, the kete. Yeah. You mentioned all of them earlier, and so playing congas and really gravitating towards that instrument. Did yeah. you see? Was it more of a? I mean, you kind of touched on it earlier, but was it more of a, of a little like you know like oh he's playing the congas over there he doesn't want to play like you know the the, the repeater the kete whatever well it was more it was more like 
I don't care what they're playing. I'm going to play this. And my Love challenge it. was to play. You know what I, what, I, what, I, what, what I ended up doing for the most part? Taking the indigenous rhythms, translating them to Congo, playing them on Congo. A lot of the time playing both parts. And by the time you realize that is not a repeater on a funde plane, you're already halfway through the tune and digging it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? sold on so it, yeah. Yeah, so it's too, it's too late for you to, uh, to screw up your face and talk. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Okay, here's, here's even a deeper question. Was there any kind of material that was recorded that was like a Nyabingi type groove, but with conga? Not back then. I do that a lot now. I do that on, right. I do right. that on people's records up here now. Right. But back then, it was, no. it was a big enough feat getting, dragging that conga through the door with me. <laughs> right, right. You know, it, yeah. I, I, I just didn't see what the resistance was to it. But, you know, for some reason, it was kind of hard to get in the door. So it was a challenge. The challenge was to get good quick. Mm -hmm. Because if you get, you know, because if you get a certain, to a certain degree of proficiency, you kind of get people off your back a little bit. They kind of believe that at least you know what you're doing. So they can leave you alone. Before that, everybody's trying to tell you, well, you know this, and I'm sitting down and I'm listening, but I'm figuring out, I'm just going to have to play what the tune tells me. Right. Because the tune will tell you what it wants, always, you know. Right. The and it, I'm, I'm sure it helps when you got people like Tommy McCook, like you said, you oh. know, who, who's probably really well-respected at that time, obviously. Oh, man. And he has your back, and he's, yeah. you know, yeah, when when it, it's it was just like, I mean, to know these guys like to the point where, like, when he was sick and living up in Connecticut, mm -hmm. you know, he'd call and we have these long conversations. Then he moved to Atlanta, you know, and like every time I'm going on the road, I'd call him, and, you know. And he'd, he'd tell me what was going on with him, you know, with his health and thing. And then I came home one day and called and the phone just rang. Wow. Mm. You know. It, it, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, it sounds like there was a little bit of a, of a hurdle there, but then definitely it got to a point where not only was the Conga and Larry McDonald accepted, but he was in demand and uh, so much in demand that like, you know, during that era. So we have the Dynamites and we have the Crystal Lights and bands like that. Um, so so you say you get back there, 1969. What What is your, you know, what are your days like? Is it a lot of session work? You're not doing the hotel bit anymore. You're, you just okay. I came stuff. off. I came back. I came back from Mexico. Summer '69, and a friend of mine came and said, "Look, we doing this gig up at the Cortland Manor Hotel, and we need you." The we was the Boris Gardner happening. Okay. Right. Yeah, man. So I said, Tony, he's now Safi Abdullah. I said, Tony was a drummer. Tony Bennett was a drummer. I said, I just come home. I really don't want any work right now. I just want to chill for a minute, you know? And he said, at least come and hear the band. Because I know by the time you're ready to play, somebody else is going to get you. <laughs> and we need you, you know? So I say, okay. And I went up there. And I started playing, but that wasn't, I wasn't like into the, se I would do sessions, you know, but like Paul and Hawks, they've been in the studio all day 
I mean, those are the days when people were doing two albums plus per day. Wow. Yeah, you know, wow. you finish you finish one album at this studio, I run up, I run over to the next studio because wow. you had an album gig over there too. Wow, that sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's it was. But because because of my like prior playing experience, you know, I don't think that anybody thought I was like into reggae music to that degree. Hmm. You see, what 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 I had to do, what I had to do was like I just play on the. I just play under any circumstance. If you had a worm wrestle and you call me, I would go play. I'd go nice. play solo. Right. You sure. know. And and I just play. Because mm -hmm. I didn't have a teacher. So all I had when I started was me. So I had to trust my judgment. You know, and I just play anything you wanted, anything anybody wanted. Mm -hmm. I used to live down the road from Jamaica Broadcasting Company. And like somebody canceled on some stuff and they need five, 10 minutes. You know, certain certain producers at the station would send down the yard to get me on. But I wasn't like, a studio maven. After a while, after a while, I got studio work, you know, because mm. I guess they could figure they could trust me with, with this stuff. Right. Mm. And what was the first? What, but, what were some of the first studios that you were recording at? That you were. Uh Dynamic, Federal, Studio One, oh, Black good. Arc. <laughs> Oh, those, those, those uh, little studios? Oh, those little studios. Huh? <laughs> no, oh, oh, I never... Those, you, who? I was going to say, no, those no. cheap studios? Those... <laughs> the littler studios, that's what you're trying to say. The little yeah, ones. Yeah. yeah. Just the, the humble oh. ones, yeah. <laughs> you know, I... You know, I do... I, I do stuff for... For, like... Like the aforementioned Keith Hudson... Right. Um, Scratch would call me from time to time. And this is funny because, like, when, when I go and I go do a scratch session, and he put up just a couple of the tracks. So I don't know whose tune it is. Uh, um, who's on the track? Nothing. Nice. I just had those, and I play, and you know, way later on, on I hear, you know, it was something on a Bunny Wheeler track or something on a Bob tune or you know. I said, wait a minute. Well, speak, speaking of Bob, Devin, we got uh, <laughs> speaking of the Whalers. Don't we got some pictures, Dev? We do. Let's let's throw this one up real quick. This is and, uh, this one. Oh, the the, the inset. The, the inset who are just is listening with to, Pete. For the people just listening to the podcast. I just want to let them know that this is a picture of Larry, Larry with Bob, and there's a picture of Larry with Peter. And then who's that? You got your elbow on, uh, Larry. That's Skill Cole, Alan Cole, Skill oh, okay, Cole. Okay, that's right. That's right. Okay, sorry. Go on. Yeah. I just wanted to tell people he, that the picture well, is. This one is uh, with. Peter and I, we were roller skating in Golden Gate Park. Mm. Yeah, nice. And the one with Bob, he had come to play the Paramount in Oakland, and it was like 75. And I had just joined Taj Mahal in like 74, so I was living in the Bay Area. Mm. And um, of course, you have to come check me as the lone Jamaican up there. Right. <laughs> and he said, I want to kick some ball. 
say, all right. <laughs> and we found somebody who could get us into the old Kazar Stadium that was supposed to have been raised. Wow. It's still there, I think. It's still there. And we got in there and we was playing. And the lady whose house I was staying, I just said, hey, Jackie, come and take this picture. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she didn't want to take it, you know, because, you know, musicians are and photographers and all that. So I said, mm -hmm. Jackie, take the picture, man. She, take it. <laughs> she took it. And it was years before I forgot about it. And then I asked her, and she couldn't figure out how to get it into the computer to send it to me. Wow. And her, her husband heard her talking, heard us talking on the phone one day about it. And he took it and sent it to me. That's how come I got that. Wow. And I, I got permission for for skill to use it in his memoirs. Nice. That's so. amazing. And what you mentioned like finding out well, for, I have two questions here. You mentioned like you'd find out later. Oh, this 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 track I recorded on was a, a Bob Marley or a Boney tune. But you, when you said like tra uh, Scratch wouldn't let you hear the rest of the tracks, was that him like on purpose because he just didn't, just didn't want you to know whose tune it was, or or was there some musical reason behind it? No, I, you know, I think he figured that what he needed from me, I didn't need to hear more. More than that, oh, musical. Yeah. You know, I I, I, I guess he just didn't want to confuse. Right. Yeah, he didn't want to confuse the issue, you know. Yeah. And so what 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 Bob tunes did you end up later on being like, whoa, that's me on that? You know, there are a couple of them. I I gotta ask Dave Hahn. Dave Hahn is in LA, call him and ask him. Okay. He played me one tune. He played me a tune one day. He was doing our DJ set at this bar called Motor City. And he played this tune. And I'm listening to the conga part. And I'm listening to the conga part. And I remember exactly what was happening with it. It's, it's like I didn't play like any variations or anything like I just I was just I had found something that they liked right and I didn't want to play nothing else <laughs> and get bounced off the tune so I just stayed I mean that was early man I just stayed on that if that's what they wanted that's what they got too. right you right it's, it's it's kind of it's kind of um it's kind of cool now that like somebody has you know, discriminating as toots would call me into the studio and leave me and leave the engineer and myself and he's gonna hang out or smoke or something like that with somebody else until we're done. Mm -hmm. You know, that when Yeah. It, it, that's that is it's, it's kinda cool to look back and to a time when Nobody wanted to hear that stuff, man. <laughs> you know. Well, you created but, it. I mean, you were setting the blueprint, right? I, it's, it's, you know, I mean, how many guitar players well, are there? Look, how many keyboard players? Well, put it this way: for the path that I took with with the drums, I I didn't have anybody to follow. Yeah. True. You know, like I couldn't like Oz's thing was his thing. That style of music was that, you know, mm -hmm. and so what I had to do, I was I had to, I had to like make my own path because like I before I before there was ska, I used to listen to. Radio Havana every day, every night. This was before Fidel came out of the mountains and captured Havana. This is this 
a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. But they had they had the same song that they play like when they're going to the news or going to a break or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the conga player was Tata Venus. And whoo, crazy. That's what I used to listen to that station for. Just to hear that just to hear that um that tune. Just to hear the little interlude. Wow. And I see what? No, no, see what saying, that's amazing. No, that I'm just saying that's and awesome. it's just so I had like the Latin sensibilities. Mm. Because, you know, we played a lot in the hotels. And then when this started, this was so herky jerky that the, the sky. you had to you had to stop and think about what you're going to put on top of that or alongside of that. It it, it, it gave me a hard time, man. But <laughs> I didn't I didn't have no quit in me. Right. I wanted to play this. This is where I wanted to go with it. I can imagine right? that you know. because you know you think of ska. And I don't really think of any hand drums, even like really bingy drums or anything, you know? And so, I mean, for you to be in that mix trying to figure out, I've got this picture here. I think it's from that era. Can you tell us who you're like, who, who is this here? Is this the Scatolites? This is the Carlos Malcolm and the Afro Jamaicans. Oh, nice. nice. The two dancers in front, the one on the left is Derek Harriet. Wicked. Wow. And the one on the right is Alfonso Castro from Teenage Dance Party. That's me on the Congo behind him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beside me is Les Samuels on tenor saxophone. Wow. On beside him was Cannonball Brian. Mm -hmm. The drummer was Freddie Campbell. And beside him was Winston Turner first trumpet and Ozzy Lawson was in the, uh, the other trumpeter. To my right, you'll see the bell of Carlos's, to my left, the, yeah. the bell of Carlos's trombone. Right. Sticking out from backstage. Yeah, I see that. And what are you guys, are you guys playing, I don't know what year this is, are you playing ska or what are you playing here? It looks like they're dancing this is, like if, if it's ska. The, it, so what, the, what is it? If they're, if, if they're doing that, it was a ska tune, yeah. Right. Yeah. And 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 you can you can explain this a little more, but you know, as a, you know, Devin and I have been listening to Jamaican music for a bit, and, and the impression we get, and you can clarify this, is that, you know, the ska was definitely a lot different from bands like a, a Byron Lee type ska or like a Carlos, compared to like a ska, yeah. Lights, right? It was, yeah, yeah, it was, it was. You see the two bands you name. Mm -hmm. They had, they had um, a kind of musicality that this is me thinking this right that they didn't right. want to like compromise too much, right? You know, but they definitely had the musicians who could play it, but it was like a choice. Whereas Tommy and Roland and those guys who were in the studio recording this stuff with all these artists day after day after day. They had nailed that sucker down, <laughs> you True. know, and yeah, they, 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 they set that stuff. They defined it more, I would you know? say, right? It's they, they were more the definition oh. of what ska is, right? Oh, they, they said it. Yeah, they said it, yeah. You know, they, they like the, the, the whole horns thing. Yeah. Oh. Was yeah, there was man. there was there was there like a little bit of like animosity like this whole okay the hotel circuit versus you know the real deal like the street sky <laughs> was there yes yeah, yes yeah, kind of yeah it was a little bit a little bit you know <laughs> it has to be a little, a little strain and you know yeah yeah of course because like okay you working from December to April, you're getting good money. Mm -hmm. And that could almost take you back to the next December. 
Mm. But you know, so you coming down there now, are you coming you coming in the studio and messing with somebody hustling, you can't <laughs> you know. Right, right. But it was it wasn't like it wasn't like serious. It's just a little Yeah, a little you know, little vibes like, and whatnot. Like uh, you know, mild classism or something like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. A little bit of animosity. No no, it didn't even rise to animosity. Just animosity. Resentment. Yeah. Resentment. Yeah. Resentment. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. It didn't get us way as far out as animosity. Right, I get you. I get you. Wrong words. And in that picture, you mentioned Derek Harriet's there dancing, and you know you working with the Crystalites. So you've you've you had a close relationship with Derek over the years, obviously working with him. Oh yeah, because he, he'd sing with he'd, he'd he'd sing regularly with Carlos, you know, mm -hmm. and like sometimes there'd be like four of us out there doing frontline stuff, steps and shit, because it would be Derek. Castro, Lassels Perkins, mm. and myself. Wow. Yeah. I'm 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 sure you 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 must know who Lassels Lassels Perkins. Oh yeah. Must, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Casey. A lot of people don't mind because you know. Oh, that's so. old school. I mean, yeah. I just yeah. You have to. Well, that's Perkins was my boy. Yeah. Yeah, man. Really. For sure. For sure. What it, I have a question because <laughs> you meant I keep I've been thinking about this. You keep mention, mentioning how you were um, you were in Mexico for for Rocksteady when you were there. I mean, obviously, you know, at that time there wasn't like it's not like it is now where there's internet and stuff. But like, did you know that Rocksteady was happening at the time? Like, did you, were you hearing any of the music that was coming out of Jamaica? What I heard first over there was "Hold Me Tight," Johnny Nash. Nash. Yeah. Yeah, oh. the, you know, and I thought it was pretty cool that you know Johnny Nash was doing that. I didn't know the politics and all that about it until later, but mm -hmm. so I remember coming off the plane. I'm coming off the plane, and I'm in the cab going home, and the driver has the, stu the, the station is turned into who happened to my friend he used to work he used to be the MC with Carlos Malcolm's band Winston Williams he had a oh, program yeah, yeah. radio was he a radio cat too no yeah the whip yeah the whip yeah yeah, yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> and and he had he had his radio program and I and he shouted me out he shouted me out and saying I just got home, I just got off the plane, or whatever. And I'm saying, this how that's how stuff works in Jamaica. Man. I mean, I come off the plane, and I'm and he's hailing me up, and I'm in the cab. And I always remember the first that first tune. You know, and you welcome me, and I said, three cheers for the pioneers, and put on long shot, kick the bucket. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Wow. I'm getting goose pimples just just remembering that moment, man. So I, it's like it just pushed me back into into my seat in the cup, you know. <laughs> that was a good impersonation too. You sounded just like him. Man, with that, though, you must have been like, "What is this?" Because like leaving when when like ska was happening, and then you get back, and suddenly the first thing you hear is that song. That's I mean, I man, I can imagine. It's a big jump. It it, it, it was it, it it was like. I guess you could say it was kind of like rock steady on steroids or something like that. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm right. saying, wow, you know, but it was, it was rocking. Yeah. The it, was pioneers. Probably, it was probably still called rock steady at that point. Right. I mean, did they, did they, did they, when did they stop calling it rock steady when it, when the hi hat, you know, when it started, when it was it obvious, but long shot kicked the bucket kind of has that transitional sound to it. Well, the question really is when did Tootsies do the reggae come out, right? I mean, oh, yeah, that's, that's very like, true. Well, uh, well like, they, as, as far as tunes, the, the, the tunes that I remember that they say were the first reggae tunes, somebody said, um, No More Heartaches by the Bell Tones. Bell Tones. Nanny Goat, I heard too. Nanny Goat. Right, Nanny Goat. And, 
and somebody said um people funny boy Pe- right uh, people funny boy yeah and and there's there's another one nanny go no not nanny go but no but it'll come to it'll come to me before okay, before we finish okay, talking okay. yeah and you see but when i come home i i don't know all those right so That's like so, so like when 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 the, when the, when the um when the pioneers bitch slapped me with long shot i said <laughs> woo <laughs> you know i said no i'm gonna have to come to terms with this and slowly but surely you know every day drop by drop the water falls on the concrete it'll bore a hole in it mm-hmm. and so well i had it going on a little bit let me tell you when i left right mm-hmm. i went to new york in 73 Actually, not in 74. I came to the States in 73 to an organization called the International Jazz Library in Indianapolis. Then we moved to Beaufort, South Carolina. Wow. And we were playing and doing pretty good at this hotel. And then the entertainment manager and the band leader had a little dust up and Banley the threatened to kick his ass and we was out of there then. It happened to be like the 4th of July, 74. Wow. He independented us. Ah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I came up to New York because the lady I was seeing that time from back home was at the Jamaica Tourist Board. She's working at the Tourist Board. So I went to check her out. And I ran into this guy whose name was Ozzy Brown, the late Ozzy Brown. Mm-hmm. And we met and I went home. And then the phone rang. And said, hey man, I just met you, but I didn't know you were you. So, so that indicated to me that I did have a little bit of a rep somewhere, you know. He said, yeah, I didn't know you were you. Right. I said, yeah, last time I looked, that, that, that was me. He says, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he say, he say uh, Taj Mahal just recorded these two reggae tunes on this album. And we're getting set to go out behind the album. Do you like to come with us? Nice. I said, okay. Wow. Uh, I said, like, when would you want me? He said, I'll get right back to you. But 20 minutes later, he called. He says, you think you could make a 1230 TWA flight to San Francisco tomorrow? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> 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 so I said wow. I don't see why not. So I said I don't see why not. Right. You know, and, let me feed the goldfish. And I out. did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Taj came and picked me up at the airport and we walked straight into a rehearsal. That's how that went. We got this picture of you with Taj Mahal. Let's see. Yeah, man. Oh yeah. Look at that pic. This on the on the left is Rudy Costa. Rudy passed. Beside him is Kester Smith, who still played drums with Taj with the trio. Beside him was the great Wire Lindo. Oh, I do. Yeah, that's Wire and, right there. Yeah. Yeah. And the stars in the broad hat 
And that's me in front there. Behind him is Ray Fitzpatrick, tremendous bass player. He also left us. And on the end is the late Hoshal Wright, who mm. used to play with the Whispers, among other people. Wow. Do you know where that picture yeah. is? Yeah. Was it in the studio? Look at that mustache, I, by the way. I know, man. That mustache is the star. I like yeah. that. I don't remember. I, I, I'll ask Smitty. All right. I, I'll, ask, I'll ask Kester. He remembers everything. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I only remember, I only remember some things. So, so how was that? I mean, you get called for the gig, and I would imagine Devin plays guitar. I play keyboard, and, you know, if I'm getting called for a gig, I'm like, all right, are there chord charts? Are there, you know, as a conga player, as a percussion player, you know, I would assume that it would be a little easier because you kind of just can melt to no, the No, it's, it's not easier. It's not I was easier? on my own. I was True on my that. own. True that. <laughs> you know, So how I was, was on that experience? Own. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know enough to be scared, so I just rolled, you know? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always a good thing. Yeah. I, you don't know I'm figuring, scared. look, I, I'm figuring if he called me and he sent a ticket for me to get up in here, he got his reasons, <laughs> you know? That's true. So I was, he, he, he already knows what you're going to bring to the table at that point. You wow. know, so we went in and we did that. The, the picture you showed, that was the intergalactic band. Okay. That, that's the ver the, that's the version of uh, of Taj at that point. Yeah. And we did we did a couple more, maybe three albums before he went back to his to do his blues trip. Mm -hmm. How come I lost that gig? I had um. I had overstayed my visa mm. and they were going to Europe and I couldn't go. If I, if I went, I couldn't come back. Right. So I took a calculated risk. I said, I'm going to stay and see if I can straighten it out from over here rather than try and start again from scratch, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was the first instance of, reggae taking me somewhere else wow yeah the second instance was with gil scott heron nice so this was so after the taj after the taj experience right i had put together a band up in the bay area a band called rhythm right and um, we did an album in the studio that was owned by Malcolm Cecil, who was Taj's arranger and engineer. And we did this album. It never came out. But he went and told Taj, Gil, that look, man, everybody's out there doing reggae. He said, at least your father is Jamaican. I mean, give you a little bit of currency. You need to do a reggae song. Right. Gil said, I don't know nothing about no reggae, man. You know, and, but Malcolm was a bass player. First time I heard of Malcolm, he was playing with the Ernest Wrangling Trio in Britain in the 60s. As a, he's wow. playing bass with Ernest. That's the first time I heard of wow. Malcolm. And then here he is engineering and producing Gil. That's amazing. So, so he got Gil to do this tune. He said, look, just do, just have them play this. And I know where to go to get it turned into a reggae. And I was living in Redondo Beach at the time. 
nice. And right behind, who living behind, living behind me was Ken Lazarus. Yeah, Ken. So I, yeah, so I brought Ken to the studio to put on two proper reggae guitar parts on the song. Mm -hmm. It was an album called Reflections, and the song is called Storm Music. And that's the se that's the second. Uh, and then he asked me to go on the tour behind him, behind that album with him, and that was it for the next twenty seven years. So I mean, that's that's got to be the first reggae being recorded in Southern California, right? Um, I think. Let's see. I don't know. You know who you could ask? Roger Stephens could tell you that. That's very We're, true. And he'll be Stephens on the show. Is our next guest. He will be on the show huh? in two weeks. Roger Stephens is Roger? our next guest. Yeah, he'll he's be coming on, the show on in yeah. two weeks. Roger, and, uh, Roger is my boy, man. Roger told us. I was going to tell you at the end. Roger told me to tell you, um, you know, that he sends his love. And you know, I I grew up going to Roger Stephens' house. That's how come I know about reggae. I used to be out over there all yeah. the time. And my name is yeah. Roger, so that's <laughs> we're two Rogers, in, two Rogers in a pod. You know. Well, there you go. So, I'm going to be outnumbered next show. Dang. <laughs> two Rogers to Devin. Yeah. Yeah. We got to get a Devin on here quick. Yeah, where's man. Devin, where's Devin Bradshaw? We need him on here. <laughs> Who? <laughs> oh, Did he say Sonny Bradshaw? Bradshaw? He, he, Devin Bradshaw. I think he played bass with Spear for, oh. for years, right? Spear? Devin Bradshaw? Who? I think he played bass with Burning Spear. Devin, am I getting their name wrong? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> there's one more picture I want to show you, Larry. This is okay. you. And by the way, big up Dave Hilliard for all these pictures. He sent us these pictures. Yeah, man. Um, this oh. is you with lenny hibbert lenny hibbert there you look at you man that's that's style and profile I mean, these right pictures there. are so amazing could you tell us who else is in this pic too that's like that's amazing um okay this was the lenny hibbert uh the lenny hibbert group mm -hmm. this was actually the first album i played on wow the, creation? Um, is the album called creation no, it's before that. This before is called, creation. It was called um, Moonlight Dance Party at the Myrtle Bank. Wow. Because <laughs> he was he was the resident band at the Myrtle Bank Hotel downtown. Mm. The piano player is Roy Morrison. Yep. The <laughs> saxophone player is Barrington Sadler. The young lady who was the vocalist, she was so bad. Sheila Rickards. Mm. And that was yours truly over there. On the vibes was um, Lenny Hibbert. This is Lenny mm -hmm. over on the end. The bass and drums, they are brothers. And I always forget their name. But that was the first album I played on. Wow. wow. That's the first one, huh? Yeah. Did that how did go ahead, Devin. Sorry, Rod. Oh well what what year is that? What year would the oh, album man. be? Oh, I don't know, man. I like think I think No, I I I I, I, I can find out and tell you. I, I found out at Brian Kayo told me to what year it was. Mm. I mean, but is it like what is it ska or pre ska or is this? No, man, this was like it was happening during the ska era. Okay. But it was like pretty much hotel music, Latin stuff and swing and. Mm -hmm. Were you, you were know, you were you on the song Village Soul? There's that uh, the one of the my favorite songs from Lenny Hibbert is the Village Village Soul song. It's not even that does it, it's it's it 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 could be me, but I don't want to absolutely say it was me. Right, because there's congas in that in that song. So I, yes, there, yeah, there's congas. Uh, it's, it's a pretty decent it's a pretty decent conga. 
But yeah. whoever that could have been gotcha. escapes me. Right. Because because by that time I don't think Noel Noel Seal he wasn't playing much that time. He mm -hmm. went on to become known to generations of young Jamaicans as Uncle Noel. He had a children's program on TV for a long time. It, it, no, look, Congress beat up a whole lot of people, man. Jerome, Jerome Walters quit. Congress went to uh, went to, this, to Canada. Noel stopped and went to switch to switch to traps, and then he went into the TV studio. It's still trying to kick my ass to do something else, but. <laughs> I have in that stuff. <laughs> is, is it because of the actual, stuff. Is it because of the actual the, act of playing the conga that you say? Like, is that what kind of gets people? Like, it's demanding physically, kind of thing. It's. I think it's the best way I can express myself. Mm -hmm. You know, musically. And I kind of worked on the way the way that I played. You see, those two American bands that I played with, they gave me the freedom hmm. to just play what I wanted. Right. Especially Gil Scott Heron. You know, I asked him one day, I said, man, like, you never wanted to say to me, you know, you, why don't you play this or why don't you play that? He said, Hey man, I uh, I got you up in here because I know what you do, and I wanted that in my ship, so right. I got you. So what am I going to tell you? <laughs> what, you know, it never came up again. I I, I, I never <laughs> asked it again. <laughs> right. right. Behind that, what was I going to do? I'm good. Right. Yeah, boss. <laughs> love that. I love that yeah that's crazy so i had all this time mixing and matching because at this time i'm going between both worlds you know both the american music uh jamaican music right because i'm taking stuff you see my whole stuff is actually based on a, on all the indigenous rhythms, the Kumina, the Buru, and the Mento. Mm -hmm. I take stuff from all of them and tie it up with, I guess, my bebop mentality. And because that will make you do stuff. Bebop make you do stuff, you know, bebop. <laughs> You can't go to sleep on the bandstand playing no bebop. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> I always tell people, I say, in bebop, one on one don't necessarily be two. It might be 11. It's a different <laughs> game. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you know, so. Right. So I learned, I learned to think like that, you know, and you work on stuff and you work on stuff. So now, I guess you could call it a little style that I have, you know. Mm -hmm. yes. Definitely. I would definitely say so, yeah. You know, so I, I, I'm i glad that everybody waited on me until I kind of got it to this point. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, hey, I, I got to ask you, like, before we before we wrap this up, like, so you, you've been on tour for I don't know how many years now, but you've been playing with, among a lot of other groups, Lee Scratch Perry, and mm -hmm. I just, I mean, I mean, I have so many questions about that. We could do a whole episode about that, but what is, what is it like? I wish I could be a fly on the wall or the, the, the tour driver or something for <laughs> Lee Perry and Larry McDonald to be on tour, just out there on the road together. Oh yeah. I mean, what is it? What is your day to day life Got like a with Jay Scratch? Or uh, and I would well, ask well, the, the same question. Like, what is your day-to-day -day life with Larry? You know, what is that like 
I'm on the road. Well, we're both in the same age group, you know. He's a year older than me. Mm -hmm. And so we have like similar terms of reference. But his experience is so totally different from mine, man. Look, in 62, in Jamaica, Scratch was driving a purple Jaguar. <laughs> Hand Already. painted. It was hand painted. Okay, it wow. was no duco job, right? You know, mm -hmm. and everybody's saying scratch crazy. I say, yeah, yeah, sure <laughs> you crazy, <laughs> sure you're right, right? He's got a different way about things, but. I don't think Scratch is crazy. Right. And then listening to him every night, you know, you get to understand the stuff that he's saying. You know, sometimes it's like a parable that you got to, mm -hmm. what the fuck are you talking about? You know? <laughs> right. And yeah, but then it comes up down the road again. And say, oh, okay, you you put you put the two things together. So it takes you a minute to get <laughs> to, to get to understand him, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I I spoke to a friend of yours, Roger, yesterday. Oh, really? Chris, uh oh, Chris from uh from Fishbone. Oh wow, Chris Dowd, yes, good friend of mine for sure. <laughs> what did he say? Yeah. In, 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 oh, what, what, <laughs> no, what you, no, he didn't. He, he, he didn't. Nothing he didn't bad. Say nothing bad. He didn't say yeah. So you're working. You're working with Chris, or how? How's how's that going? How you guys? Uh, uh I might do something on the album. There you go. There you go. What what it is? This friend of his, um. The mad Russian, Vlad. Oh, Vlad. Yes, Vlad. Vlad, he's a good guy. I actually, I think yeah. he, he emailed me. Yes, Vlad. He's yeah. a good friend of, of, of Chris's. And I, I met him and he's a great guy. Oh, yeah. Chris's. Yeah, man. And he he um he called me yesterday. Oh nice. And we had a long conversation. And then he said, Hold on, don't go anywhere. And when he came back on, he said, This is Chris Dowd from Fishbone and <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's you crazy. Know. Yeah, those are good uh, guys. Yeah. If they're smart, they'll, 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 they'll lock you in, man, on some of those recordings for sure. Man. Oh, you man. <laughs> I'd, love to do, I'd love to do some stuff. Look, I, I did... I do death metal, man. I did... I did, I did um, <laughs> A Soulfly album, man. Wow. With Max Cavallaro. Nice. Primitive. I do primitive. You know, like I play whatever. I I will try it. When I when will I try it. When I heard that Dave uh got a hold of you, Dave Hilliard, and that you were like a member of the Rock City Seven, I was like, Wow. I was like, that's dope. I mean, good get, Dave, because after seeing and hearing you with them, it's it's that special ingredient. You know, you do yeah. bring your influences and inject it into well, what Dave's doing. Well, I, I like that stuff. It's like all the later stuff that I'm doing with all the, with, with these groups around here. I've mm -hmm. known Dave. Our seven has been together what twenty years or at least. Yeah. Yes, around there. Yeah. And we met we met at a Scatterlights concert. Nice. You know, and he tells me that it was the because of the conversation that he and I had that he said he realized he wasn't crazy and he went out and put the rocks at the seven together. Wow. <laughs> That's all you, you know, so he, Yeah, so all 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 these um the the, the stuff that I'm like it's subatomic. Mm -hmm. With scratch, 
Yes. You know, yes. saxophone, myself, mm -hmm. and a DJ. You know, that's all all these kind of playing situations I find myself in. Right. And the Scottalites as well. Right? Huh? You're playing with the Scottalites as well. I mean, when shows were going on. Yeah, and uh <clears throat> we did this I did this um live cast with them a couple of weeks ago. Oh, oh it's Halloween, right. yeah. Yeah, the Halloween thing and and then Ken said in the middle of the show something about me being around more and all that. And, oh. And so it's not official. Then, maybe I maybe I started something. I, huh? I like that. And then no, then then today, you know, Flows is telling me, look, don't forget to tell them that you're with scatterlights, you know. I love it. So I'm saying to myself, I am. <laughs> she says, yeah, yeah. She says, yeah. Don't don't forget to let them know that don't you. Don't forget it. Yeah, you heard it here. Yes, for, those guys, you with the scatterlights. So that's good. We broke. We broke so heavy news. You're hearing it for. The, you're hearing it officially for the first time wow. with everybody who is out there. Nice. You know. That's yeah. We broke the news, Devin. That's, Larry's an official member. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, did you have? Ha, were you? You said you met Dave at a Scottalite show. Were you performing with the Scottalites back then, or was it just you were attending? Yeah, it was. It, it was in it was in New York here. Yeah, whenever they whenever they come through, you know. Yeah, you and go they call play me. with them. So when they call me, when when Tommy called me, mm -hmm. I I just asked where on what time because right. these were the guys who allowed me to they had patience with me man you know they made me play my little pilinky business <laughs> until it came out of that and you know it landed somewhere you know yes yeah. You know, all healed scatterlights. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I was there. I was there when they reunited in '83 at '83 Sunsplash. Oh yeah, yeah, great nice. lineup. Yeah. After, uh, they had broken up for 19 years. Insane. And reunited at that. I was down there with Gil, with Gil at the time. Wow. Wow. That Jackie Matu on stage and I think no no Jackie had, Jackie had, no Jackie had, Jackie had been gone then but oh Jackie the original Scatterlights Jackie yeah. hey he wasn't there Look, it, I remember Jackie was with the with the virtues hmm. Jackie was in short pants and shit nah. <laughs> and and he I'd have to call his grandmother Jackie's grandmother and tell her yeah and tell okay. her look. He's not coming home after school. He's he's going to the country to play. But wow. don't worry about it. He stay at my house and I make sure he got to school in the morning. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it doesn't even seem real to me. That's like that's crazy. But it's true, right? Because Jackie started <laughs> when he started playing with the Scottlights, he was young, right? I mean he was Yeah. He was and and he was playing before that. Jeez. And the Sheiks you know, or something like that, right? Wasn't there a band called the the Sheiks, yeah. yeah the I played with the Sheiks for a minute. Really? Ken wow. Lazarus was in the Ken Lazarus was in the Sheiks. Wow. With the, with the Jones brothers, drums and and uh, Lloyd Spence on bass. Wow. So he he was a kid, and you were kind of his, you know. You'd make sure he he didn't get into trouble or anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, look. This is how it could, this is how it could be worked out to get him to play, right? Because mm -hmm. he could he could stay by me and go from there to school the next day, and then he go home after school. You know, so I just call his gr grandma. And tell her what was going on. It was. It's like kind of. 
it's amazing to me too, right? For me to sit back and like realize that I know all of these magnificent musicians hung out, you know, with most of them, you know, I mean, like have numbers and a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. Even the old guys that you don't know anymore, I'll probably have a number for somebody. Wow. I I just think myself like really, really fortunate, man. Because I didn't know it would, it would get to this. I hope it would get somewhere in this region, you know. Yeah. But I had no idea where it was going. I just know I had to do this. And it was either I was going to do this now mm -hmm. or spend the rest of my life wondering what would have happened right. if I'd have done that. Of course. And that was, that scared me enough to make me want to go out there and just face it and do it, you know? Right, right. It's it's been it's been a cool run, man. I mean, fifty odd years is kind of a amazing run, and, amazing run, and going <laughs> strong, know. man, and going strong, going I can't really think of, strong. I can't think of any other artist from from that era that's still, you know, like ma making, making like I set you in a category like uh, in your own of your own because you're still making like super great music with with bands that i love like you know rocksteady seven and like the slackers and lee perry i mean it's still going super strong it's amazing and these the, and these 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 young guys in new york know like brooklyn attractors oh yeah definitely heard of them yes you know mm -hmm. and i'm doing stuff with this kid anand pradhan he pradhan he's 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 a very impressive musician. He play he play he plays with the scatterlights too. He plays wow. alto with the scatterlights. You, you say yeah, impressive but, musician, and you also nailed it earlier when you just said you've worked with many musicians. Uh, is there who, anybody that you've met? And and I I'm kind of leading towards you know if you had this feeling with Bob or Peter, but or any of the Whalers, but. Is there anybody that when you met them, you just knew there was something different? You did know. And I know it's a cliche question, but, you know, you've worked with so many people and they're all talented. But can you name some people that you, it was just that extra, extra special, you know, extra bit of specialness? Well, Gil. Gil. Nice. Uh, yeah, I knew Gil was like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I work with some great people, right? Mm -hmm. Taj Mahal, mm -hmm. he's also like sort of one of a kind because he he has one foot in blues and one foot in Caribbean music. Right. You know? And what special, Bob was special. Like I remember, I remember when the first tour I went out with Taj, we got to New York and he said, you got to go to Jamaica, you know? I said, yeah, what, what, what for? He said, you got to go get wire. I said, okay, I wasn't going to fuss wire about Wire Lindo. Go to Jamaica. Wire. Yeah. Wire? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, Earl. Earl, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I said, yeah, man. So I went down there and I started to think about it now. You know, and I was saying, I can't just go and take the man, piano player like that. You know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you come so, in. So. <laughs> yeah, I can't just do that. So no. I went up to the pink house, you know, to talk to him, sit up on the veranda. And he come out and just so what happened? So I say, well, straight up, I come for wire. 
He said, what? <laughs> I said, yeah. This cat named Taj Mahal sent me for a while. He said, oh, Taj? Taj is my uncle, man. Sure. We're cool. <laughs> he, I didn't know at the time that when he was doing Slave Driver and Johnny Too Bad, mm -hmm. Bob and Farms stayed at his house and Skill stayed at his house and helped him mix the two tunes and Family Man played slave, played key piano on Slave Driver. Wow. And on, on that album, More Roots, that's, that's the name of the album, More Roots. Crazy. Yeah. So he and, knew they knew each other. They yeah. Yeah. So so like yeah, so I didn't but I when he sent me for wire, I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. You know, is when I came back, you know, and I told him the story. He said, Oh yeah, they stay at the house. They was at the house. I said, no, I, you couldn't get me killed like that. You sent me down. <laughs> I can pick, I'm picturing like I'm picturing Taj like telling you this. And then you're on your way, and he's calling Bob. He's like, "Yo, I just told Larry to go get wire. You know, act like you <laughs> act like you're gonna kill him." I could just picture this whole right. like, scenario playing out. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you know. And Bob said something to me that that Bob said something to me that day. You know, he said, "Reggae music is the last music." I'm still trying to figure out what he meant by that. You know, it could be so many things. Right. But, and he always used to say, man, just cool, man. You and me going to do something. We soon do something. And he said that, and we never did. Get, well, I wasn't around. I, I, I was off. You know, I was fighting the same battle on another battlefield. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because I came, I came, I came, I came to the states, and I say, well, I don't want to come back home until I can come back here with a kick-ass band. And 10 years after I left here, I did that with Gil Scott Heron at Sunsplash 83. You should check, you should check out, you should check out that, that DVD, man. You have to now. Oh, for yeah, that, sure. that was the original, that's, a, that's the original Cool Runnings. That's the name of the video. That was, Cool Runnings wasn't the bobsled team. <laughs> cool Runnings. There was no John cool Candy in this is, one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cool Runnings is the is the is the um Jamaica Sun Splash. So that was the uh, that was the year when Scatterlights right. that was a kick ass set they played too. Wow man. It was like it was like they like they never it's like they hadn't stopped. It's like they were together all those nineteen years. That they were apart, mm -hmm. wow. you know, down to the squabbles. That who used to squabble with who and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's like one of them just went out of the room and came back in and continued the conversation. <laughs> it was just watching them, just watching them get together again, mm -hmm. you know, and you see like. Brevet and Nibs, mm -hmm. you know, getting up to their old bull spit. <laughs> <laughs> the original original drum and bass right there, you know, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, dangerous. Dangerous, man. Like, you know, to be on all those records, man, with, all, with these guys. Because when when they when they came up here after Sunsplash, I did did quite a few of the albums. Mm 
like one of the high points on my thing is High Bop Ska. Great album. That's yeah. one of the albums. Yeah, that's one of the albums. Like, I'm happy. I was happiest to be on. In Lester Bowie. Yeah. You know. It starts with Guns and Navarone, doesn't it? Is that the album that starts with Guns and Navarone? No, that, no, that was that was done up up, up upstate New York. Mm. I, what's, um, that album, what's that album called? What does High Bop Sky have on it? That's the one. It has Lester Bowie. Okay. David Murray. Uh, Steve thought- Touré. Is is Steve is, Touré. Is, is Ken in the chat room? Ken, what which one starts with Guns and Avarone? Which yeah, album? Ken's been Ken's been talking. It's like in the winter of nineteen sixty and four came this movie to Jamaica. Scott Delights took the music from the movie, put it to the sky. Came up with this sound. It's called Bad Guns and Avarone. And that's how it starts. And I was a kid when I heard that, so I will never forget that, you know. But Oh man. It may not be that oh. album though. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so high bop Scott, yeah, I got it. I'm gonna yeah, that's that, that's, that's, a, the... that's a bad album. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I I think I I think I also snuck onto a David Murray album because of that album called South of the Border. Mm. I show up in the most unlikely places. Val Val Douglas is in here right now. He says, "Yeah, that's it." So oh, is that Val? Right. Val's in there? Yeah, Doug. Doug Which? Which? Val yeah, Douglas says, is in the chat room. He says right here, he says, Big up Larry. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. Dougie. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. yeah, we had Val, Val on Dugan. a couple of months ago, man. Yeah, that man. Was, he was, was you had him on favorite. here a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, that was one of mm-hmm. our favorite interviews. Val was such a sweetheart. He yeah. is, I mean. And, and he played on, you know, it was crazy yeah. because we usually start, we didn't do it today because we were running late, but we usually start the show with like Roger and I each play a record. And I, I was playing this Meditations record from 1975, and then, you know, it, it finished, and I was like, all right, cool, that was my record, and now let's bring on Val Douglas. And he came on, and we were like, what's up, Val? And he's like, you know, that was me playing bass on that song you just played. I had no idea, so it was perfect. <laughs> it was perfect. perfect. <laughs> and, it, and, and Devin, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like every guest that comes on, like the majority of them bring up v- Val Douglas for some reason. I mean, I've had... He gets like, brought up a lot. Sister Carol brought him up. Um, yeah. I mean, different different people. The great oh, yeah. Donald brings him up, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it, he's he's um. I say the younger set of musicians, who I think very highly of. That the yeah the the the, the now gen, now generation now generation yeah. yeah. That Mikey yeah Chung that crew. That was a bunch of champions, man. They, Young guys, mm-hmm. that's Dougie. that generation's one of the wickedest rhythm sections. I think. You know, I, I'm gonna ask a question based on that because you had different nowadays we would call them clicks, but you had different groups, different bands, and I know a lot of musicians were interchangeable, obviously from studio to studio. But if you had to, you know, in the late '60s, early '70s, if you had to say, okay, this is my click, this is my band. You know, because you had different, you know, what band would you say that, that you would call home? Like, which band do you feel you're more part of? That's a hard question, I know. We're in trouble now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking back then, not now, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, every, no everybody is still alive by what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and they're watching, too. And they're, like, and they're oh. watching, too. They're like, oh, what's Larry going to say right now? <laughs> they're like, what's he going to say? They, they put down their fork. They put down their drink. No. <laughs> yeah, they put down their cup of noodles. <laughs> it, like I don't know man. maybe I had that kind of feeling when I used to go up to Count Ozzy and play mm-hmm. I didn't have I didn't have the chops to do all the stuff that I needed to do with that. But like, I knew that that music was gonna influence everything else that I did. Cause my, I guess the way I play, 
I can switch from Jamaican style music to non-Jamaican music by changing just a few things. You know, it's like I play this way and I can just adapt it, which you wouldn't know if I didn't say that. But, <laughs> but, right. Right. But that's but that's but that's that's what it is. You some things work in some situations that are common to all music, you know. Mm -hmm. And one thing, when you get a chance to play, play. <laughs> okay, don't yeah if. If somebody if somebody shouts at you solo, like first solo I ever took is at the jazz session, Penguin Club on Dino Road, and all the guinea gogs are on stage. You know, Tommy, Vernon Muller on trombone. Cecil Lloyd on piano, Lloyd Mason upright bass, and I'm off to the corner playing my little stuff. See, at this time I was playing with Cecil and Runaway Bay, and like I say, I, I'll admit I was really out of my league. You know, I was glad Cecil and me was tight. You know mm -hmm. that it could work, All right? And so. Everybody went on the bar, we drink, and then we come back on the bandstand. And we started, what, what was it you started to play? Was it Cherokee or something? And Cecil got up and walked off the bandstand and did like this. So everybody walk up and I get them to play and say, you play. And he pointed at me and say, no, you play. Wow. <laughs> I haven't, I, I just stopped sweating about that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, I got dreams about that moment. Yeah. I don't, yeah, oh, I, I, I don't, I, I can't tell you what I did, mm -hmm. you know, but I made it through. He didn't. He didn't cuss or say nothing. You know, and right. he would cuss, Espe oh, especially if he had, if he had a little, a little drink or two. Jaeger bomb or yeah, something. He'd yeah, you can't. Don't just don't make no mistakes. Just, right. just, just don't at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and you and him would be drinking hard during the day. You know. And he look at he look at me and say, "I don't want you to come to work tonight and do anything wrong, and tell me about your me was out drinking rum today. I don't want to hear none of that stuff. So <laughs> I'm drinking because I know what I can do. You better be on your game too. Wow, Dang. that's a trip. That's intimidating right there." I know. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Uh, right now. Straight up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he said, he, he said, I'm, I'm playing that. So I'm drinking what I can do. My Like, he do stuff like, okay, we were the Playboy Trio was Cecil Lloyd, myself, and the one and only Chloe Johnson. Clue J and the Blues Blasters. Yeah, yeah definitely. Wow. That was the Playboy trail. Look, I've been punching above my weight for a long time, man. <laughs> you know, cause sit, just sitting, just sitting down with these guys is you have no clue, man. Right, but I'm sure you it know. sharpens your tools faster, right? You know. Yes. You have to rise to the occasion, so, and I'm sure. See, those days, in those days, the Playboy used to change their their act a new singer and a new comedian every two weeks 
So for those shows, Cecil would bring in a drummer. And the drummer would play the stuff. He'd kill it in rehearsal. And he'd come on the bandstand and make the first mistake, Cecil look over at him. And the second mistake, he do toss it. And Cecil be reading the score and playing the drum accents. Wow. The, the, yeah. Wow. He'd be playing the drum to, to hit. Man, he he was he was something else. All right, sounds yeah, like it. it. But it, it it gave me a chance to like you see all those musicians that you just hear about and nobody know too much about them. You know, like Herman Marquis. Yeah, mm-hmm. Herman. You never heard of Herman Marcus? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hornsey. Sure. Oh, you know. Him and Tommy and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Carl McLaughlin. Mm-hmm. It's it's just a bunch of people that I'm so happy that, you see, they, Jackie Willisie, trumpet player, they, they like taught me what it was to be a musician. You know, mm-hmm. the hotel gig, you wake up in the morning, there's somebody out in the banana plantation behind the house practicing. And you don't want to be the last one out to practice. You know? Yeah. So you get up and you, it's, and you knew what was expected of you, what you could right. get away with on mm-hmm. the bandstand from, you know, it's, all, all these magnificent players, man. Some players went out and nobody even still don't know who they were. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's a drummer named Sammy Watson, who used to play with Cecil. And when we doing the floor show, he, Sammy is like, He's like a, he's like a bundle of dynamite, man. Right? And he, he's just sitting there and playing and smiling. And just his, his eyes, he's not, none of that, none of all that. And he's, and he's killing it. How one of the best press roles I ever heard to this day. Mm. Yeah. It, wow. I could only imagine because we we know we know what we know as far as musicians and there's a whole other side to it. I mean, you know, there's names yeah. you were mentioning this whole interview and and a lot of people I've never yeah. heard of. And yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, that's a trip, man. Uh, so good. You know, like I'm 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 so glad that you know most of them I can still reach out. I still know where a bunch of them are. I can reach out. Yeah. Ken is in here saying Jackie Willis, he played with the Scatolites in the 90s as well. Yeah. So but he, I played with him with Cecil Lloyd, and I played with him with Janet Enright at the Sheraton Kingston, when the Sheraton Kingston opened in 60, what was it? In sixty something, another uh, another set of musicians that you don't hear about. You might have heard of Leslie Butler. Oh yeah, Leslie's great, a great organ player, yeah. right? Or yeah. keyboard player. But the, but yeah. I know him as there's there's like some organ tracks that he's played. Like uh, he did stuff with Lynn Tate, correct? Because I know he was. Yeah. He apparently he used to he used to, yeah. he used to have his own group, and he was married to Janet Enright. Mm, okay. And that was the group that was a shirt. And him, Janet, Stephen Laws on bass, Billy Dean on drums, and Jackie Willis on trumpet. Mm. I think Jackie's in, Jackie's in, uh, 
Atlanta in the Atlanta area these days. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's get a him trip. on the show, man. Wow. Right, Ken, hook definitely. it up. <laughs> Gotta get yeah, man, like, I try to keep numbers on all these guys because I still I still have that much, give them that much difference, you know? It's, mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, like, I thank, I thank them for not, like, summarily dismissing me, you know? I mean, you know. I've heard stories. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. What's go that? ahead, Manel. <laughs> no, no, I've, I've heard <clears throat> stories about people's attitudes towards me <laughs> and the Congo. Uh huh. You know, stuff that people have voiced. But I won't say nothing because, like I say, who could blame them? You know. I don't come out of no traditional music musicians, and here I come dragging this conga drum up in here. I want to sit down on the bandstand and play, and nobody know me from Adam or know what I can play. Yeah, he's a nice guy, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And I heard one particular story. Somebody told me he said he asked. The person what he thought about me this is low these many years later you know and he said he said man when larry came around with that drum man i just laughed because i just knew that that was a sometime thing that would that was going to go nowhere mm. he said well I pretty much got a different attitude about that now, <laughs> you know, after, after all that, right. You know, you say, you say, well, you say, look, he really took it and went somewhere with that shit. I mean, you that know? sounds, that sounds like reggae itself. Right. I mean, for so long, it, you know, it was just, yeah, man. it was just like, this ain't going nowhere. And now it's like, oh wait, this music. <laughs> this, yeah, this is this is like, Bob, and you, like you know, Bob you know, said, you know, you know it, also, also, no, nobody in Jamaica knows how big Ska is, how well thought of, Ska, respected Ska is. No, I mean, very few people, just like just people who travel, probably, right would know, you know, to the point where I can't think of a Jamaican drummer who can really play ska. I can't think of almost any drummer. Like there's maybe three or four, or I don't even know, that can play ska. There's some guys in New York, there's some guys in LA. One or two. Yeah. You know what, I, and you know what I would say is I've seen footage like, you know, the Alpha Boy school that's still going on when, you know, and, and some yeah. of the, the some of the youth in, in Jamaica, and I'm just go basing this off of clips that I've seen online because I've never been to Jamaica, let alone know what's going on with the Alpha Boys. But um, I have seen some clips clips of like some young people at the school, and and I, it's like a marching yeah. band thing, and it sounds like a, a small version of the Scottlights. It sounded really, really? really good. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, well, a lot standards. of them, a lot of them came, a lot of them came out of Alpha. Right. You know, a lot of scatterlights yeah. came out of Alpha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would make sense for them there at the school to like teach that, you know, teach that style that, as just that, a tradition of like. Well, this... they, Don Drummond compositions are like their, you know, like if uh, you go to American high school jazz, well, they're going to play, well, you know, these yeah, standards. Yeah. Look, Don, people wonder if Don can really play. They need to listen to the Jazz Jamaica album. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Listen to Green Island. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, man. He's special, man. Yeah. I think what I think those what, guys are for real, man. Pe people who have those questions, 
yeah. pe people who are asking like can Don Drummond really play I feel like because I've known some like older American musicians who you know are into jazz and stuff and don't really when they hear Jamaican music from the sky days they don't really like they're not really hearing it and and I feel like with them what they're getting stuck up on is the fact that there's only one or two chords happening and that's why they're like oh they're not this are they gonna change chords and I feel like that's what that's where those questions arise from you know like can Don Drummond play but but like you, you listen to Green Island, like you just mentioned, like, and it's just like, man, this is one of the greatest musicians ever to record. You know? In some ways, it's harder if you listen to some compositions and it's going to go C minor all day and you hear Roland Alfonso yeah. or Don Drummond. It's harder because now there's times where Roland will be here and then he goes over here and it's like there's less choices, really, when you, you, you the minimal chords, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's, it's more challenging. Cause all, all I know, man, Delfeo Marsalis likes the hell out of oh, Don nice. Drummond. There you go. There you go. That's all you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so I'll take his opinion any day because I'm of the same mind. Mm -hmm. oh, some of the greatest stuff. Larry, we are coming up against it now. And so, um, man. I, we could do this. We got to, like, would you be down to come back on sometime? We got to have you on sometime in the future, yeah. Yeah, so man. I, I come back on. Cause it, feels like, it feels like there is so much that I haven't, that we haven't even got around to yet, you know? Yes, there is, and there is, yeah. You know, because I, I know that you as musicians, you know, really know what they were asked about. You know, well, and I mean, yeah. we just love Jamaican music so much. Like, yeah, we play it. I mean, I feel like the reason I play music in the first place is just so that I can play Jamaican music, you know? So that's why Roger and I, it's so special for us to have people like you on the show where we can ask about, Definitely. you know, what was, you know, so you called Jackie Mitsu's grandma and said, you know, like it's that kind of It's just a trip. It's just <laughs> amazing. It's thing. surreal. <laughs> and it, it, it's, it, I, I get jealous of, of the Dave Hilliards and the Cheekies and, 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 because they get to spend time with you on the oh. road, and it's, and it's it's just I can imagine, you know, yeah. I think me and yeah. Devin would, would we, we'd be bugging you too much on the road. <laughs> It'd be like, <laughs> Jeez. Jeez, is my boy, man. Yeah, he's yeah. cool, man. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. yeah, my man. brother, my big son. There you go. Man. <laughs> there you go. Well, for sure, man. We gotta have you back on the back on the show, Larry. Um, but yeah, we're gonna. Man, I want to thank time, you. Man, you know. Yeah, we definitely want to thank you. I got you a minute. Jonas. There you go. There you go. <laughs> nice. You well, know, thanks, like, th thanks for having me on, man, because, like, this is one of the more comfortable interviews I've done. I just got to run my mouth. Of course. Cool. <laughs> you know? We love it. That's we great. love hearing it. I love to it. hear that, man. That's great. Yeah. That's no one's no one's tuning in to hear me and Roger run our mouths. They want no, to, no, no. They want to hear you, you know? So <laughs> yes, that's exactly. What, like and we want to hear you so yes just, you we know, do. thank you for for sharing these stories and like you said there's so much more that hasn't that is still yet to be told you know so we want to just we want to just keep having these interviews and have you, have you back on as soon as we can really yeah i'd like to do yeah i'd like to do this again man. for sure brother cool it's yeah good. Uh, awesome all right larry well, I, 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 i'm waiting to get for, for you all to get around to the stuff that you never quite got around to today Oh yeah, we still I, got yeah. I got a whole list here that I just am like I have I'm a flipping scroll. through it and I'm like I can't. We're gonna be here for four more hours if I start talking yeah, about this stuff. So. For sure. <laughs> so we'll just save it. We'll just save it for next time. For sure. <laughs> yeah, that, let's let's put the put that list down and dig it out when you call me. Exactly. It's gonna happen, man. Yeah, man. Nice. All right, Larry. Thank you so much. Um, be well. Uh, you know, I hope we tell every musician that comes on the show this, but, you know, we hope that sooner than later we can all get back to playing shows and uh, we hope, you know, to see you see you in person before too long. Definitely. Yeah, man. Let's let's just let's just wipe up this COVID stuff so I can come back out to the shaky right? side. You I know, because like California is California is California is my home state in America, you know. Because when I came, I spent like eight months before I got to California. And I spent like eight years. 
out there between no. north and south. That tends to happen. You know, yeah. like I was out there so early that Elmo and Mario from the Whiskey and that other club up the road. Roxy. They would call me to ask me about, you think we should get burning spear up in here? <laughs> You're like, nah. You know, but, but this was, no, no, nobody knew who, this was before anybody knew yeah, who yeah. anybody was, you right, know. Right, right. But I heard that they were the first people who had, who had um, black music on Sunset. Wow, that's a fa that's crazy. Yeah, that's on my list. What's, what's, what's the name? What's the name of the the whiskey and the other one? There's a Roxy. The one we John. The Roxy. The Roxy. Yeah, yeah. And Bob you played know. the Roxy, right? I think the Whalers mm -hmm. played the Roxy. Mm -hmm. um, Burning Spear yeah. played. Um... I took I, I took Joe Higgs into the rock into the whiskey. Wow. <laughs> me too. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I have, I, I, I have a rehearsal cassette for that wow. show, I think, with, what? with Joe Higgs and my band. Jeez. I had a group down in LA called Idrin. Oh, okay. yeah. Like I've that. heard of this. Yeah. I think Roger yeah. Stephens has told me about this. Yeah. I, I, actually, I spoke, I just spoke to the keyboard player yesterday. Oh really? I keep tabs on all. I keep tabs on all my guys. Man. Nice. <laughs> That's good. Beautiful. That's what you do. Yeah. My, all right, Larry. My band. My, one more thing. The, yeah, the yeah, sweet please. water out in the sweet water out in Redondo Beach. Mm -hmm. That was the. I took the first reggae band in there. Wow. And and the wow. and the reader the, the the South Day reader or whatever it was their first color issue have me on the cover the photo nice. after i did that show with them they I was on the, i've been out been out there for a minute what year was that <laughs> uh 70 that was like like 79 80 or somewhere like that wow that's amazing. Yeah, yeah I, I played. Menace, I yeah. played. I played reggae north and south, yo. So I know. Yeah. 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 Man. You remember a group called Dell and the Sensations? Yeah. Yeah. I, I said yeah very quickly, but I've definitely heard of them. Yeah, they, they were not. They were. They were. They're from Belize. Most of the members was from Belize, but wow. um. And they played reggae as well? Or... Almost. Almost. <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> they attempted. On paper, it was reggae, yes. <laughs> at that time, it would, at that time, it could probably, right. it, would, it would get over, get by. But it was, mm -hmm. you know, they never said that it was a reggae band anyway. Right. You know. Right. Right. Jeez, right. At least not that I heard. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So yeah, this yeah. is gonna be up, man, because I, I I was paying attention to you all, and I don't I don't even know who all was on here. I gotta go back and check. Can I go back and check it out? Oh yeah, yeah. As soon as oh we, yeah, this is okay. gonna be. I'll send you I'll send you a link. This is on YouTube, like immediately. Right now, you could even go back right now and watch it on YouTube, and then um, you can. It's also a podcast, so in the next day or two, it'll be uploaded as a podcast for for right. people as well. But I'll send you the link t tonight. I'll shoot it to you. Yeah, Definitely. yeah, cool. I, I just, I, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't even um, look over here to see who was on or anything like that. You know, right, yeah. right. When you, yeah, cool so no, when, when you rewatch so the does, broadcast, you'll be able to see all the comments and whatnot. Yeah, um, yeah. What's what's Flo? What's Flo talking about? It needs more pictures. <laughs> oh, uh, the private chat is that what it is over here i don't know oh we need more pictures we had a nice oh, maybe, pictures do we maybe maybe, maybe i well, look maybe i look up in my archives 
look up yes. in my archives and oh, yeah. see what I got for the next one. You I mean, can hold yeah. it up here and you see it, right? Oh, that too. Yeah. I can, I, oh, yeah. Yeah, so. For sure. That would be great. See what yeah, I'd I got. Love, yeah, I'd love to. We'll coordinate yeah. that. That would be yeah. great. Yeah, man. Cool. Well, this has been so good, Larry. Thank you so much, man. Um, All right, man. Thank you, guys, man. It was, it was a real pleasure doing this. And cool. I, it was no no sweat, no stress. I like that. <laughs> Beautiful. The no. pleasure's all ours, man. Yeah, absolutely. We appreciate it for sure. Us old guys don't like stress. There you go. No. There you go. We don't handle that. We don't. We don't. We, it, no. It we shouldn't like, be like uh, that. It should be like that. No, we no want you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Talking about music. Exactly. Yeah, but but, thank, but 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 seriously, seriously, thanks for having me, man. Well, thank you for coming, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. It's been a pleasure. I look yes. forward to the next one. Most At definitely. Us as well. well we'll talk to you soon. All yeah, right, man. Yeah. We'll see you, Larry. All right. All right, peace, brother. Larry McDonald. Wow. Yes. <laughs> How awesome did it all work out for us to jump in? Even though it was a little late, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. And, and no, it sounded wow. great. There was no issues once we started. It was jaw it was just perfect. came. It's jaw. I mean, we, it really was special the way it all worked out for us to go right into the interview that's great absolutely yeah man well this is i think that was that took the cake as the longest interview and, and might have rightly and rightly so that's a perfect that's man those stories oh. i can't wait to have them on again and just i didn't even know we went as long as we went else. <laughs> yeah i was i was so having we'll, fun with that so we'll um mm -hmm. that being the case we'll get out of here i do want to mention to everybody that the reggae pod clash merchandise store is up and running we got all these hoodies and shirts and mugs and hats and beanies and you know for the reggae pod clash fan on your gifts list this holiday go pick up some merch just go to rootfire.net and click on the store tab um and we got some good stuff up there man and other than that we got to talk about next well two weeks from now two weeks December from now yeah december 5th yes we are having the great roger steffens on the show I've talked about this on the show before, but about from the age of 15, and I'm 37 now, so it's been a while, I've been going to Roger Steffen's house, and at that time in the 90s making tapes, and, uh, you know, just keeping him up way too late, like bringing out one more LP from his reggae archives and trying to tape it, and uh, so I'm just really excited to have Roger on the show. For people who might not know who Roger is, he has been... Um, He's a reggae historian. He's so much more than that, but if I have to describe him quickly, he's he's a reggae historian that's been doing it since the since the 70s and has one of the great uh, reggae archives in the world. He's right here based in LA in Echo Park and he just knows he's he's a he's a reggae museum in his in his house and in his brain and he'll be on the show December 5th, um, which is also the day of the funeral in Jamaica of Bunny Lee. So I know we're going to talk to Roger a little bit about Bunny Lee. Yes. Um, and, in there. and yeah, if man. he's if he's anything like his first name, he's amazing. <laughs> I don't know about that. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, let's Raj, get into well, what we got going on real quick. I got you know yeah. I've been doing a lot of stuff and busy. Um, this is one of the things I just have going on recently. Uh, you know there was this uh, general this uh, gentleman goes by Indie Dub and uh, he did this some really really cool thing where he got a rhythm and just started getting different interpretations, different versions if you will. And it was like two people per rhythm, yada, yada, yada. But go to my Facebook and check this rhythm out. It's really cool. Nice. And it's the same rhythm, and all these modern musicians get to do their take on it. So it's essentially a lot of versions. Um, really cool song. And also I wanted to throw in that's not on here is I just released uh, for pre-sale on my own label, Revis Records. It's a holiday 45. I like to do these every year, every other year. And this year it's a organ instrumental Kind of like a Winston Wright, you know, rock steady version of the Charlie Brown Christmas tunes. This yes. is called, um, yeah. So if you're familiar with Christmas the Charlie Brown Christmas, we, Christmas time is here. Vanessa and, and I uh, were rocking that today. Ted. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So I just released that today for pre order. Go to rogerrevis.com or my Facebook <laughs> or my Instagram or whatatever. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's my commercial. It Devin, sounds what do you really got going good. On? We were listening. We were listening to it today. All right, on man. And we were doing the little the peanut dance. Oh like yeah, the peanut dance. Here, but yeah, the, like uh, this, you know. Oh yeah, Snoopy. Yeah, yeah he's got. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, I'm what doing do my cracking? same old thing every Tuesday. I'm doing the songbook sessions. You know, tune in to rootfire.net/tv. 
and you'll find me sitting right in this chair singing songs. I'll do, you know, doing expander songs, doing uh, songs from this new album I've got coming out uh, that Roger and I just finished mixing and we're working on art right now for taking requests. You know, it's really, really fun. It's a way to keep my mental health somewhat uh, somewhat on the right track during during this time where we can't play any any shows. So that's been really awesome doing these uh, acoustic sessions every Tuesday. Anybody who wants to take a guitar lesson, I keep saying go to backstagemusiclessons.com. I'm available uh, to teach beginning guitar, songwriting, and vocals. Let's do it. And then go follow me on Twitch, Man Like Devin, because you see I got all these records back here. And Instagram Live is not letting us play records anymore because they recognize the copyrights and kick you off right away. So Twitch is the place to do it. Um, and I want to have a DJ, a DJ night sometime soon on Twitch. So uh, those are the things that are happening. Nice. And... As always, you can send an email to theregepodclash at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. You can go check out the new website at theregepodclash.com. We're working on it right now. Some good mm-hmm. things are happening. Yeah. And um, please come join us December 5th when we have Roger Steffens on. Until then, big thanks uh, to our guest, Larry McDonald. Larry McDonald, yes. an amazing interview. Thank you to Flows and Scatolites and everybody who helped set this up. Uh, thanks to Reed and Rootfire. And we will see everybody December 5th. Yes. With Roger Steffens. All right, y'all. Amen. Be good. Later, Raj. Later, Dev. See you guys.